We started with 30, now we're down to 10. In the next hour, there'll be just one. Here in Malta, we're going to crown the world's strongest man. There are 10 finalists, they'll be competing over seven events, but only one of them will be the strongest man in the world. They start with a huge weight on their shoulders, the deadlift's even worse, then there's five massive stones, from slipway to runway, a boat and a plane, then a simply huge log, and finally everything but the kitchen sink. They all deserve a medal, but only one man will lift the Metrex trophy. The 10 finalists, Magnus Samuelsson, defending champion, the giant Swede. Jamie Barr, the canny Scot, the only British competitor in the final. Yuko Ahala, the world's strongest man in 1997, can he do it again? René Minkwitz from Denmark, his first time in the competition and he's made it to the final. Jani Virtanen, hugely impressive in the heat, he won five out of six disciplines, another Finn. Sven Karlsson from Norway, he was leading world's strongest man in 97 until he got injured. Hugo Girard, one of the youngest men in the final, a world champion surely, if not now, then in the future. Torfi Olesen, the gentle giant, there aren't many glaciers as big as him in Iceland. Berent Venneberg, Disappointing in last year's final, looking to do better this time. And finally, the oldest man in the competition, Laszlo Fekety from Hungary. If not this year, then probably never. A nice gentle breeze down at the harbour and a nice gentle start. Commentator Paul Dickinson. Two heats of five down at the harbour and I have to say this could be the toughest of both. The best time overall is going to win. Will it be Hugo Girard, one of the heaviest men in this final, 330 pounds. Renan Vandenberg in the final once again, so From dominant Finland, in his heat. Another brilliant Finnish competitor, Jani Virtanen, two From metres Sweden, tall. Magnus Samuelsson. The defending world's strongest man champion, Magnus Finland, Samuelsson of Sweden. Ahola. One of his fiercest rivals, the former champion, Jukka Ahola. Under the yoke. Left. This weighs 800 pounds and away we go. World's Strongest Mind final is on the way and Vertanen is leading. Samuelson, the champion, about a metre behind. Then it's Yuka Ahola. The rest are struggling just a little bit at the moment. Yuka Ahola is coming through. Vertanen is going to finish in second. Samuelson third. But it all depends on the clock. There's one more heat to go. A cracking time by Yuka Ahola. 21.34 seconds. And Hugo Girard finished very quickly, finishing ahead of Magnus Samuelsson. That's a big surprise. Beren Venenberg had all sorts of problems down at the start. He'll be very disappointed with his time. But now the other five competitors have all got to go for that time set by this man, Yuko Ahala, the former champion. You were almost running at the end. <laughs> yes, because uh, there was only five meters or three meters left. And uh, if, you, if you run, you can still keep it. But if you do it uh, after 10 meters, 
Uh, it's it's a definitely prop. Good start though. Thank you. Well, Yuko Ahala playing it down as always. There's a long way to go in this final. From Hungary, Laszlo Fekete. Laszlo Fekete. The great rock lifter from, from Hungary. Scotland, Jamie, Jamie Barr, Barr from Scotland from Fife. His first ever World's Strongest Man final. Iceland, Torfe Icelandic strongman have always been brilliant in World's Strongest Man. That is Torfi Olafsson. And Rene Mingfitz, a big surprise in his heat with Yuka Ahola. Sven Carlsen back after a one year gap and looking brilliant. Just how heavy does that feel on your. Well, three, is that, that going to feel? It's three times my body weight, so <laughs> it's like running down 30 metres with three of me. <laughs> so you're really looking forward to it? Uh, oh, yeah. I I'm actually <laughs> getting crushed. Uh, I'm looking forward to being crushed. Uh, Jamie Barr sounding a little hey. bit nervous. He is the lightest hey. man in this final. That may be a disadvantage after seven events and away we go. Sven Carlsen already in the lead. The Norwegian going well. Minkfitz has gone down and that is a big problem for the Dane. He looks as though he's hurt himself. But look at this. Sven Carlsen absolutely flying. 21.34 to beat. It's going to be very close. He's miles ahead of the rest. He's done it. He's beaten Yuka Ahala 20.12. Olafsson, well, he's going along at a crawl at the moment in second. Jamie Barr is just behind him. And on the far side, Laszlo Fekety has come to a grinding halt as well. Olafsson struggling, but the Icelandic man will finish second in this heat. It's a long way down overall, and Jamie Barr has stopped too. What a performance by Carlson. And quicker than Ahola. Were you expecting that? Actually, yes. <laughs> you actually expected to win that event? Yeah. Because? If there was one event I could win, it must be the old. Pretty impressive. Uh, Viking power at its best. Now we're going to get rolling for sure. So Viking power and victory to Norway. Carlsen taking the 10 points ahead of Ahala. A disappointing start for Samuelsson, just fifth place. The ruins of Hajaim are 5,000 years old, and this next event is real caveman stuff, brute force. The lift starts at 600 pounds, that's 44 stone, and gets progressively heavier until nobody can lift it anymore. The first man to go, Laszlo Fekety, called it quits at 300 kilograms. Next up, Jamie Barr of Scotland, and he was quite happy with 320. Torfi Olafsson, perhaps disappointed that he could only manage the same amount. Next, the giant Finn, Jani Virtanen, just the 320 for him too. And here's Hugo Girard of Canada, also stuck on the 320 mark. The defending champion disappointed by his performance in the first event, now going for 340 kilograms, which would put him ahead of all those men we've seen so far. He's never been that good at lifting weights off the floor only because of his immense height. He's got much further to lift it than everybody else. He's got it above the knees, he needs to lock out though. This is like lifting two Tolfi Olafsons. 340 kilos, he's off balance. No hips. Oh, Dougie Edmonds says no. No left. Samuelson didn't ah. lock his hips out. He's out of this second event and looking perplexed and perhaps his inquest into why he failed will go on for some time. Yuka Ahala, the bar has now moved up to 370 kilos. Only three men left in the competition, himself, Venenberg and Carlson. 370 kilos. All these three men are tremendous weightlifters, and this is as close as we're going to get to a weightlifting competition in this final. Ahola in those little ballet shoes just to get a little bit of extra grip. Oh, it's so easy. A brilliant lift by the Finn, and that will put pressure on both Carlson and Venenberg. 
370 kilograms as well for Beren Vandenberg. It's hard to describe what 370 kilograms feels like it, but imagine those stones being replaced by a giant motorbike at each end of the bar. Incredible. This to draw level with Yuko Ahola. He's shaking, my goodness. He's got it. Venenberg stays in the competition, and Carlson, believe it or not, has passed this weight. He wants to go even higher. Yes. Tremendous effort by the Dutchman. Sven Carlson now coming into the competition with a huge weight of 375 kilos. Only five kilograms more than the other two, but it could make a big difference in terms of the overall point score. Squats down, the back straining, the neck is straining. Can he hang on to the bar? He's done it. Good lift. Good lift, says Dougie Edmonds. And Carlson is absolutely delighted. The new weight at 380 kilograms for Yuka Ahola. And if he's successful, it means that Venenberg and Carlson have got to lift even more to beat the Finn. He hardly bends his legs. This is all on the back. The last bit moving so slowly, but he locks out. And Yuka Ahola has done it. That's one of the biggest weights lifted ever in the history of World's Strongest Man. From Holland, Ren Vandenberg. He actually passed the opportunity to go for 380, wanted to see what Yuko Ahala could do. In your own time, lift. It would be incredible if the Dutchman could beat the great Ahala, who won World's Strongest Man two years ago. Oh, he couldn't even get it off the ground. Oh, dear me. A valiant effort, a very good competition for Vandenberg. Well, this is the only man now who can beat Yuka Ahola, 385. 800 pounds plus. That is an immense weight for the deadlift. Oh, he's got it off the ground. No, he couldn't quite do it. The showman from Norway will have to settle for second place. Yuko Ahola takes maximum points. It was a brilliant competition. I thought that I can, I can pull a little bit more, but uh, I'm very happy because I, I won. <laughs> Brain and Braun from Ahala, playing the tactical game and taking 10 points there ahead of Carlsen, Venneberg. And what it means is that Ahala and Carlsen now have a five point cushion over everybody else. For Ahala, he's seven points clear of Samuelson. Is that enough? Legend has it that off the rocky coastline of Malta, St. Paul was shipwrecked in AD 36, leading him to convert the existing Roman population to Christianity. Well, at least that meant he didn't have to pull his boat up this slipway, which is what our remaining nine strong men are going to have to do now. from Fife in Scotland, Jamie Barr now, takes on this huge boat. 300 kilograms they've got to pull up the slope. Ready! Take the stream! And I suppose the question everybody asks themselves when you see an event like this is, how on earth do you train for it? There's nothing in the gymnasium that represents pulling a boat up a slope like this. It's all down to sheer guts and determination. And Jamie's got off to a good start. Progress is slow, but a determined and long, long effort is what's required here. There's a terrific crowd. Now, come on, Jamie. He competed so well in Britain's Strongest Man, and you have to say now that having made it through to the final, he must be ranked number one in the United Kingdom. Tremendous effort from Jamie Barr. Everybody watching here is shouting for Jamie. One more pull. He's got to get the front of the boat over the line, not just the frame. And Dougie Edmonds said, you've got to pull it over. 
And Jamie Barr is not best pleased, but those are the rules. How hard was that then? Wasn't it? Wasn't too heavy, but you're starting to tire. The grip was starting to go towards the end. But it wasn't too bad. Is this is this predominantly arms, legs, back, or what? It's everything you've got. As much legs and arms in it as you can. The more power you're putting on it, the harder you've got to squeeze the rope. And over a distance like that, your, your grip's going to tire. Following Jamie Barr, next into bat, Laszlo Fekete, 57.88 for the giant Hungarian. Torfi Olofsson, 44.62, a good time from him, but beaten by six one hundredths of a second by Berent Venneberg of Holland. From Finland, Janne Virtanen. Virtanen has put up a very good display so far in the opening two events. He's down in third place, five points behind Sven Carlsen and Yuka Ahala. He's well equipped to do a fast time in this event. Oh, he just missed his grip there, though. He's got incredibly long arms and then pulls and leans back to pull that 300 kilogram boat up the slope, 660 pounds. Tremendous atmosphere here, and Jan Everton is really going for it. Nobody's broken 40 seconds yet, and Vertonen's only got about a couple of meters to go. Could he be the first? Yes, he can. That was a massive last pull, 33.81, and that is gonna be very hard to beat indeed. A big puff of air, a fantastic effort. From Canada, Hugo the massive Girard. shoulders of Hugo Girard, the policeman from Canada. And the first time he's ever encountered anything like this, I suspect. Take the strain. So Vertonen's lead, 33.81, the target. And talking to one or two people around the stadium here. What they've said is, keep the rope tight, and I'm sure that's what Hugo Girard is trying to do. Not short pulls, but long and powerful. And that boat is really making progress up the hill. This is very fast indeed. Hugo Girard, who's down in sixth place overall after the first two events. Well, could he even break 30 seconds? He's just outside, but it is quick. He's in the lead, 32.27. A very cool customer indeed, and a real threat to everybody else in this event. It wasn't easy, but uh, I practiced it, so I knew I could do it well on that event, and uh, my technique was good, so I made it look easy. The Blue Grotto on the south side of the island, one of the most beautiful venues we've ever From been to for World's Strongest Man. Samuelson. And there won't be any beauty about the way Magnus oh, Samuelson pulls this boat. It'll be all brute strength. Ready! Take the string! Away we go. Now then, Samuelson has been complaining of a back injury, and this could affect his performance here. Long pulls though, hands very close together and that means that the weight is evenly distributed on both arms and those massive shoulders. He's making good progress and he needs the points. Not his normal brilliant self over the first two events but this is looking better. It's very fast, 32.27 to beat, one big pull's done it. Oh, tremendous by Samuelson, his best event so far, 31.62. And the reigning strongest man goes into the lead. Here we go. Sven Carlson, first in event one, second in event number two. From Norway, Sven Carlson. Looking in good shape and very, very confident indeed. And so he might. He's tied for number one position at the moment right. after two events with Yuko Ahola on 19 points. Well, he's seen what Samuelson has done. And of course, Hugo Girard, two very fast times. 
He's only just over six feet tall, Carlson, so perhaps the length of lever not to his advantage. Now the time he's got to beat, 31.62 by Samuelson. Girard, 32.27, and Vertinen, 33.81. They're all extremely fast. And the Norwegian, well, if he's to go ahead of Ahola, he's got to set a fast time. Ahola has yet to go in this event. One more pull does it. 35.88. He's down in fourth place, but still the great Finn has got to take his turn. Just shakes his head when he saw what the time was. Disappointed, but still not out of it. His first time outside of the top two in this year's final. Well, everybody waiting with bated breath to see what Yuko Ahola can do. The last man in this third event, a World Strongest Man final for 1999. And the one thing that Yuka Ahala always does so well is prepares himself mentally. He's been hiding away, keeping himself to himself. He'll have done his arithmetic in terms of what is required here. A little bit jerky, but so powerful. The main part of Yuka Ahala's strength is in his back, and he's using it to good effect here. Samuelson's time at 31.62, I think it's going to be safe. But how close can Ahala get to Carlson's 35.88? This could be Ahala's poorest performance so far as well. He's outside of the top four, 36.20, and that means we're going to have a new overall leader. And so a first victory for the defending champion Magnus Samuelson. That's surely going to put him in a better frame of mind. And you're still in there pitching, aren't you? You're still in there with a chance. Let's see, now we have one day's break. Or like this, this afternoon free, so uh, hopefully with some treatment I can be back in the business tomorrow again. And after three events, a fascinating situation. Just four points separating the top four strongmen. Now back at the final, three events gone, four to go. Next up, it's the Atlas Stones. You know all about this. Five massive boulders to be put on the wall, culminating this huge hammerhead of a stone, 160 kilograms. That's getting on for 27 stone. This is my event, and uh, I have to win it, because then I have still chance to win the title back. From your point of view, if, if shall we say Magnus is four behind, but Sven's only one behind, are you, are you looking at Sven more than Magnus now? Of course, uh, he is very good uh, with stones. He's very, very strong in uh, plain pool. He's, uh, he's uh, maybe, maybe strongest guy in final. Well, Jamie Barr has already taken his attempt. 63.09 seconds to lift two stones. A disappointing performance for the Scot. So the next two we see, Laszlo Fekedi of Hungary, a tremendous stone lifter, and Torfi Olofsson of Iceland. Uh, well, we saw what Fekedi did in the heats. He got off to a cracking start and he's done it again. And uh, one of very few people to actually lift that giant final stone, but Fekedi, in fact, having a problem with the first. Olofsson on his shoulder almost dunked that one on top of the platform. Fekedi catching up just a little bit on the left-hand side. And in fact, Fekedi going really well now. It's Olofsson who's struggling. Still the massive stone of 160 kilos to go. That weighs 140. Now, can the Hungarian do it again? Number four for Olofsson. And he's done it just. A brilliant performance once again. 43.13. And there's blood all over the place. He bashed his face. He bashed his elbows. But he's done it. Olofsson's had enough. He concedes defeat on that giant fifth and final stone. But what a performance by Laszlo Fekedi. Yuka Ahala strides out onto the platform with Beren Venenberg, the Dutchman lying in sixth place overall. 
He had a good performance in the heats on the stones too. Well, you said what Yuko Ahola had to say in terms of this being his event. Ready. That remains to be seen because it was a brilliant performance by Hungary and Laszlo Fekedi. But look at the way Ahola gets away. Oh, Venenberg, a bit of a problem with the first stone. And the stone, in fact, has rolled off the platform over the back. Now, at some point during this competition, he's going to have to go round the back and retrieve it. I'm not even sure he knows that it's gone off the wall. Meanwhile, Yuko Ahola flying. Still going for that time of 43.13. And this is the final stone. He's faster than Fekete was with the four stone. Can he get the final stone up? He's done it many times before. Just, no, it's slower. Just by a whisker. Hungary still have the lead. Ahola 43.65, half a second behind. And Venenberg has been told he's got to go and get the small stone. All the strong men knew what the rules were before this event started. And Venenberg looking a bit miffed about what's happened, but it's his own fault. But what about Yuka Ahola? A brilliant time in second place at the moment behind Laszlo Fekete. Is that a bit disappointing for you? Come second? Yes, place? yes. This is not my competition now. Bad luck yesterday, bad luck today. I don't know. You, you seem to struggle with the fifth ball more than normal. Yes, uh, it was uh, a little bit too sandy. It went forward and. Uh, it's okay. Just have to watch everybody else now. Yeah. The overall leader, Sven Carlsen of Norway, the first onto the platform, accompanied by Jani Virtanen of Finland. Virtanen, 22 points, four behind Carlsen and three behind Jukka Ahala. And in fact, the Finn is equal on points with Samuelsson. Here we go. I suppose you have to say that Vertanen has an advantage in the fact he's about six inches taller than Sven Carlsen, but Carlsen is flying. Well, making these uh, giant stone balls look like paperweights. Carlsen with number three, gritting his teeth, going so fast. He's almost faster than Ahola on this fourth. Now, can he get the fifth stone up? If he can, it would be a major achievement for him. I'm not sure whether he's ever done it before. He's certainly faster than everybody else, but I think he's running out of time. Viertinen struggling with that last one as well. And so many people have succeeded with four, but the fifth has always been a problem. Viertinen gets it eventually. He's in third place in this event. Carlson has blown it at the last attempt. Can you believe it? It was faster than everybody else, but 160 kilograms has beaten him. Janne Vertanen just being told of his time. It's very, very good indeed, but he's still behind Ahola and Fekete. Is that a good, is that a bad result for you, do you think? Yeah, but it's not over. There's still three events to go. Canada, you go. Hugo Girard, well, he really is becoming a revelation in this final. Much fancied to do well, but a big question mark about the form of the defending champion, Magnus Samuelsson. How is his back going to affect his performance here? Ready? He's got to get a good result here. He must get the five stones, and the times that have been set are absolutely fabulous. 43.13 by Laszlo Fekete. Girard there dropping the first stone. That's not good news for the Canadian. Ahala as well, five stones, 43.65. And Yanni Vertinen, five for the comparative novice at 45.59. Samuelsson with the third. Well, Gerard's found a new way of doing it, just dropping it onto the shoulder, then onto the wall. Now then, Samuelson, the big test, the fifth stone. Coming up towards 40 seconds, the target is 43.13. I don't think he's going to do it. Oh, my goodness, his back must be killing him. That's a terrible position to be in. Push in. A little push will do it. Girard is giving it a go as well. Come on, Magnus. Over 50 push. seconds, and that is only going to be good enough for fourth place. Samuelson in a bit of bother with his back. His final is not going so well. 
I thought they were going to get the fifth one pretty quick, quick first. But I lost a few centimeters. So I had to fight it for 10 15 seconds and so he got to me. But at least I gave him a fight. And you had to put it on with your chin? I. As they say, you know, what you don't have in muscles, you must use your head for instead. Well, maybe his head's telling him the title is slipping away. Victory in the Atlas Stones to Fekete, but sneaking up on the rails, Jani Virtanen of Finland. Oh, and by the way, English, no speed. He's very happy because he's in uh, top three in this moment, and uh, he's happy. Can you win? What's about that bit? Uh, no. <laughs> we understood that bit. <laughs> OK. Well, he says he can't win, but look at him, just four points behind his fellow countryman, Yuko Ahala, still very tight at the top after four events. I could go into all the details about weighing 70 tonnes and carrying 148 passengers, but at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, these guys have got to pull a plane. From Scotland, Jamie Barr. What an enormous test for Jamie Barr. I think it's safe to say that this is one event none of these guys will have ever practiced before. Well, we've pulled some things in our time in World's Strongest Man, trucks and buses, as John was saying, but a plane, my goodness. 70 tons of steel. Well, there's been a bit of problem setting this event up in the first place, and uh, one of the problems is keeping the plane straight. But Jamie Barr's off to a good start. As Yuka Ahola was saying too, one of the most experienced men at this sort of event, stay low, take short steps, and keep the pressure on. And that's what Jamie's having to do here. The wheel must go over the white line. So just when you think you're finished, you've got to keep going for about another five or six meters. Jamie Barr, the pride of Scotland here in the World's Strongest Man final. A little disappointing so far, but this is the target that everybody else has to follow. Oh, he's got inches. He thinks he's finished, I think, but he's got to go over the line. One more pull, surely. 59.63. A shade inside one minute. Talk us through it. Talk you through it. From start, pain. In the middle, pain. Three quarters of the way, more pain. And the last, really painful. But I did it. I like this guy in the comp in under a minute. So it gives a fat boy something to chase, eh? Shock's out! Well, I'm not going to comment on what Jamie just said there, but Torofi Olufsen, I think, has got a distinct advantage here. He weighs about six stones more than Jamie Barr. He's got lungs the size of a horse. Now then, what about the technique? He's an absolutely massive fella, Torfi Olufsen. He's taken over the mantle of Iceland's strongest man from some of their greats. Magnus Ver Magnusson, of course, won this many, many times. And John Paul Sigmundsson, but here we have 26 stones of Torfi Olufsen. Not exactly thundering down the runway, but going well. 59.63 to beat. Only five meters to go, he's gonna do it comfortably. A very, very good event, providing he keeps that plane going. This could be one of Olufsen's best events so far. 44.53, 14 seconds faster than Jamie Barr. Oh. Absolutely phenomenal. But Olufsen's time was then beaten by the Canadian Girard, 43.42, and that was just better than the Dutchman Venneberg, 44.56 for him. Chalk's out! Well, the next man to get ready for this is Sven on, Carlsen of Norway. In second place, Wait. behind Yuko Ahala, but three points adrift, and that's a lot to make up, despite the fact there's still two events to go after this. So just over 20 stones Sven Carlsen weighs, but that pales into insignificance compared with 70 tonnes. Well, one or two of the competitors so far have had trouble keeping this plane straight. That's largely due to the uh, pilot in the cockpit. Uh, Carlsen trying to pull in a straight line. The plane is slightly offline, which is going to make it even more difficult for Carlsen. Carlson chasing the time of Hugo Girard, 43-42. He's going to be pretty close. He's going to be very close. He's just got about a metre to go. 
Oh, it's just outside by about 0.3 of a second. Carlson in second place, ahead of Orvson, but still the big names to come. Magnus Samuelson. I wonder how he's recovered from lifting those giant stones. Drops out. Are you ready? And this is another event which is going to hurt the Swedes back. If he's got any weakness at all, it is in his back. Every other part of his body is gigantic and very strong, but he's off to a rocky start here. He was wobbling all over the place. He's got to try and stay on that white line. And with only two events to go now, if he is to defend his title successfully, he's got to make his move. It's almost got to be three wins out of three from now on. Tremendous applause for this guy who's been working so hard this year to defend his title. At the moment, Yuko Ahola in pole position. Now, is it going to be quick? He's over 40 seconds. He's outside everybody else's time just at 44.66. So still Hugo Girard in first place and Carlson in second. But we've still got two competitors to come, two brilliant competitors, including the overall leader, Yuko Ahola. You are always very uh, tactical and you know exactly what you have to do before an event. Given what Magnus has just done, what, what do you think you need to do now? I have to be faster. Shocks out! A man a few words, but some brilliant actions throughout this ready? final. He'll need every ounce of his 21 stone frame to pull this plane successfully. He's such a compact athlete. And actually, he's one of the best looking athletes here. There's not an ounce of fat on him, he's all solid muscle. Well, he's got tremendous support, as you can hear. Trying to pull it straight, trying to stay low. Look at his arms, he looks as though he's got a couple of coconuts strapped to his arms there. His biceps are absolutely massive. 43.42 the target. Everybody's so close together in this event, it's fascinating. He'd love to beat Samuelson too at 44.66. Samuelson all guns blazing in the last two events, that's for sure. Oh, it's quick, it's just outside 40 seconds. 40.44, we've got a new leader. Yuko Ahala, the former champion. Well, he could be this year's champion if he keeps on going like this. Thank you. Jani Virtanen, Yuko Ahala's teammate from Finland. Give him it up. Are you ready? Yep. The last man to go. Well, in terms of reputation, he's always played second fiddle to Yuka Ahala. He's in awe of what Ahala has achieved in his long career in strongman events. Maybe this is one of a new breed coming out of Scandinavia. And goodness me, we've had some greats in the past. Virtanen charging on, trying to stay low. Two events to go for this young fella, and anything could happen. It's been a great competition so far, and he's going very, very quickly. There's only five meters to go. He's well over the line. Can he break 40 seconds and challenge Ahala? Yes, he can. 39.48. I have to say that is a surprise, but it makes the battle, the overall battle for World's Strongest Man, terrific as we move into the last two events. A superb performance, and it's Finland one and two. I, I know you will say there are two events to go, yeah. but that might, that may be the pool that has won you the championship. Do you think? Maybe. If I can't, if I don't do mistakes tomorrow, then this was great pool. But uh, like you said, there is still two events. Will, will you go to bed tonight dreaming of winning now? Of course. Because uh, after 98 competition, I was very disappointed. And uh, we did, Jan and I, we did so much work before this competition. And uh, if I can win tomorrow, then I'm the happiest man in the world. And also maybe strongest. <laughs> So Ahala with one hand on the trophy, despite coming second in the plane pool behind Vietnam, 
Girard taking third place, Carlson fourth. And what it means is that Ahala has a three point cushion going into the last day's events. Two more disciplines to come. And so for the grand finale, we come to Fort St. Elmo, scene of one of the most famous sieges in history when 40,000 Turks were held at bay for a month by the Knights of St. John. They actually showered 7,000 cannonballs a day on this place. They've also filmed Midnight Express here, and now they're about to crown the world's strongest man. But before that happens, there's still two events to go, and the penultimate one is the log lift. This thing weighs 360 kilograms. Well, Magnus Samuelsson may be about to relinquish his title, but he was determined to go out in style. Fifteen repetitions from the giant sweep. That was a great effort. Yeah, you must be happy with that. How can I say? During circumstances, going in the beginning and also feeling, to be honest, the spirit is going as well. Pretty pleased. Wait till you see me when I'm fresh. <laughs> well, somebody who was in great nick was Hugo Girard. He wasn't impressed by Samuelson's 15. 12, four, please. 13. 14. 15. Seventeen repetitions from the Canadian, and that was a new world record. So a good finish in the medley, and you could actually be quite high up the leaderboard. Oh, uh, like I told you before, nothing's over till the uh, fat lady uh... does what she does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big three still to come. First Carlson, then Ahala, finally Vietnam. How does Samuelson assess the possible successors to his title? Sven Carlson, in, uh, I think he can do well in especially this event because he's uh, good pressure, good sh uh, really good shoulder power, and he's pretty quick as well. So I, I think he will chase Ahola for his money. But uh, as I say, Ahola is a hard man to beat when he's smelling victory. Take your position. Well, realistically, if Carlson is going to become champion, no. he's got to win this one. event and the next one as well. One. The rule's very strict here. You can't dip underneath it when you're pushing that log up, and you've got to push it out to arm's length. Carlson at the moment, smooth, going well. He won the very first event in this final. He was equal first place with Yuka Ahala after event two, but he's had one or two slip-ups since then. Oh, now then, number eight was easy. Number nine is becoming a problem. He dipped underneath that one. Dougie Edmonds says no. Oh, he's done it again, and that is the end for Sven Carlson. He's only got eight. That's way, way off the pace, set by Hugo Girard and Magnus Samuelsson. And I think Sven Carlson's chances of becoming champion are finished. Yuka Ahola wrists heavily strapped there. There's a huge strain on the wrist, the fingers, and of course the shoulders. The effective weight on the shoulders as they push this log up is about 120 kilos. Well, I suppose that equates to about the size of a big refrigerator full of your week shopping. 17 and a half stones. Lift. Here we go. Yuka Ahola knows precisely what he's got to do here. Three. Beat 17. Or beat Magnus Samuelson's 15. Five. And certainly finish no lower than third place going into the last event. Jamie Barr, incidentally, he finished with six repetitions. So his first ever World's Strongest Man final has been a little disappointing. But he's still developing into a very fine competitor. Now then, Ahola going well on 12. 13. 
Ooh, a little bit shaky on number 14, but Edmund says yes, and that is the end for the Finn. He thinks he's done enough. The overall leader finishes with 14. Not a spectacular performance, but he did just what was required. 14 repetitions. Are you happy with that? Yes, I'm happy. Maybe one more, but uh, then am I? I have to save my back. Maybe one more, but uh, that was enough for me. I'm very happy. So how many do you think Yanni can do? Ten. Well, that was very Thank specific, wasn't it? Yanni Virtanen, a big test for this fella. And if he's got any chance of catching Yuka Ahola, he'd love to beat him by a couple of places one. in this event and not leave it all to chance in the medley in the Two. final. Three. So, what has he got to do? He's got to beat Four. Samuelson's 15 and preferably go for a new Five. world record to beat Hugo Girard's 17. Six. That would be an awesome performance by the Finn. Seven. Just about halfway there to the grand total of 17. Oh, he's struggling all of a sudden. He's beaten Carlson's eight repetitions. Oh, well, Ahola's prediction of 10 was just about right. Can he get one more? No, he can't. And that means Yuka Ahola, with one event to go, has moved an extra point ahead of his teammate, Jani Vertinen. So Girard may have won that ahead of Samuelson, but the most significant performance from Ahola, third place for him there, and he now has a five-point cushion at the top. Does Vietman still think he's got any chance? Maybe. <laughs> and has Carlson given up the ghost yet? If I win it, maybe. If he has an accident or if he slips or whatever, anything can happen. Yuka Ahala, the champion two years ago, defeated in a wonderful competition last year by the Swede Magnus Samuelsson on the verge of becoming world's strongest man yet again. The first heat has already gone, but these five competitors are the ones that count. Hugo Girard, he's had a tremendous final. Sven Carlsson, I think a little bit too far off the pace to become champion. The former champion, Magnus Samuelsson, he'll be back bigger and stronger next year as always. Yanni Vertonen, an exciting prospect for the future. And Yuka Ahola, surely destined to lift the title for the second time in his life. But as you heard Sven Carlsson say, anything can happen. Take your grip! Well, first of all, Open these the two giant cylinders weighing 120 kilos each. Now, times don't really matter here. It's all about places. Oh, the strain on the shoulders, and Samuelson wants to finish with a flourish. Vertinen is in contention too, so is Carlson. Samuelson in the lead, on the far side, Hugo Girard in the white top. Samuelson's flying, that 300 kilogram tyre went so easily. Now 240 kilograms of chain and 110 kilos of anchor. Samuelson, his reign as world's strongest man might be over. Oh, he's come to a grinding halt and that means Carlson will win the final event. He does it now, Ahola in second place. And that means the Finnish champion, a little bit of glory for Sven Carlson. But once again, for the second time in his career, Yuko Ahola can call himself the world's strongest man. You feeling good? Yes, very good. I don't understand it yet, because it, it has been a very hard year. Because after 98 competition, I said, no, I'll be back and uh, I will win all events. But uh, actually, I won only one. <laughs> but it's OK, it's enough for me. Is this, does it feel better now than it did two years ago when you won for the first time? Yes, yeah, much better because uh, my good friend uh, Magnus Vermangsson, he said that you can win it once, but uh, if you can do it twice, then you are a real champion. And I think I am now. <laughs> well, Carlsen may have won the last battle, but the war was won by Yuka Ahala, crowned world's strongest man and seven points clear of the rest of the field. World's strongest man who received the Metrex Trophy, Yuka Ahala of Finland.
so the strongest man in the world for the second time in three years. The runners-up spot to Jani Virtanen of Finland and Sven Carlsen of Norway in third place. Ahala receiving the trophy from Len Moskovich, President and Chief Executive Officer of Metrex USA. And so a very proud moment for the Finn, but he knows he's going to have to go some way to matching the achievements of one of his predecessors as world's strongest man, Magnus Ver Magnusson, champion four times in six years at the start of the 90s, but Ahala has time on his side. So how much do you want to win it a third time in four years? Of course I will come back because uh, I can't stop. This is so good and nice sport. That's it from this year's World's Strongest Man. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the programmes. Who will be the World's Strongest Man for the year 2000? We'll see you in 12 months' time. Who knows where in the world? <laughs>